Well, good evening. Feels like church again, doesn't it? The preacher's back. Amen. I tell you what. I, uh, I have to warn you folks of something. I, I feel it just be fair at the risk of uh, offending uh, the pastor. Uh, we might be here a little while tonight because my wife and I ran into him at the restaurant in Chilhowie. He was drinking coffee. So, <laughs> no sleepy for the pastor tonight now. He... Yeah, I tell you what, uh, good thing we didn't clock in. We'd be on overtime, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> that sounded like a threat, didn't it? Oh, my. Yeah, uh, Joe said he could just turn his hearing aids off at the appropriate time. and He'll turn the volume up, amen. But it is good to... To be here tonight in the house of the Lord, isn't it? The, the preacher says it best, uh, we come apart. Man. Come apart from the world. And I tell you what, you know if you don't come apart and you stay in the world, you're going to come apart anyway. Might as well come on to church, right? Come apart in a good way. Let's, uh, we, we rode by, my wife and I rode by the Baptist church up here at Chilhowie, and we saw that they were having a blast with vacation Bible school, so what if we sing a Bible school song? Would that be all right? A song we sing in Bible school. 412, Onward, Christian Soldiers. Remember that one? Some of them don't remember it. Well, I tell you what, it'll be like Bible school. In, in, in VBS, right? Or just went in church, I guess. In church, amen, amen. This is a good one. Let's stand to our feet. It's 412. Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before Christ the royal master leads against the foe forward into battle see his banner Your voice says loud your anthems ring. 
Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Amen. I like that song right there. Well, Gary and them did see us down at the Mexican thing, and I was just trying to get them not to drink as much as... Um, <laughs> Oh, did I mention that? Okay, I meant, uh, you know, uh, so they wouldn't fall asleep. That's what it was there. But, uh, hey, it's good to see you tonight. Good to be back in the Lord's house. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being good to us. Lord, with all our heart, we love you. Lord, it may be shallow, but, Lord, that's, that's what we've got to love you with. And, Lord, we thank you so much for what you did for us to save us. Bring us apart. And Lord, especially in these last days, a lot of people are looking for government to change things around. and A lot of people are looking for science and physical or medicine and stuff to fix things. But Lord, we know that it's all a result of the world that's turned away from you. But Lord, because you saved us, we've got that hope. Lord, that we'll be okay in the midst of all of it. We may have to endure some things, but Lord, we'll be okay because you're always on the throne. This is your world. Lord, you know what's going on. You, you, you set it all apace, and Lord, we just trust in thee. I pray, Lord, you increase our faith tonight as we get into thy word. We see people that are kind of are indiscreet in uh, many of the things that we know about when we read the Bible, but Lord, there's so many great truths in their lives that we can apply to our lives to overlook our faults and see your uh, greatness. Bless this time we have here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Be seated this evening. I tell you, it has been good to be back in the Lord's house. I tell you, I've been <laughs> felt half backslid last two or three uh, services and stuff, but um, I just couldn't wait to get back to the Lord's house and uh, uh, got to do some extra reading, a few things like that as much as I could, but didn't get real bad off sick as far as um, being uh, in a lot of pain and discomfort and stuff. So uh, just a mild, I guess. Symptom. I just was doing my Joe Biden imitation, I guess. Um, you know, <laughs> no, <laughs> and then cough once, twice, and then say, because <laughs> yeah, they. And the reason I say that is because they gave me the same drug they gave him. And <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, but that's as far as I'll go with that. Uh, but it is good to be back in the Lord's house, and I pre appreciate. Um, oh, let me get. Let me, let's do this here first of all. Let's start off with the. Um, Philip said, let someone to the Lord again. He wants to give it just a quick testimony. Come on up here, brother. Get behind the microphone here and let other people that are online hear about it. And uh, praise the Lord for the one who got saved Sunday morning out in the parking lot. Uh, but this was a, even another Amen. thing. Go ahead, brother. Amen. I'm Arthur Phillips, Meadowview, New Jersey. Uh, I sang that in New Jersey. <laughs> That's how much I love this church. Amen. I flew Amen. down here from Amen. Newark Airport. Uh, I love that song we just sang uh, in a church in New Jersey. That's why I'm saying I told the preacher, uh, mentioned to them, uh, Gary, when I was in Sunday school in New Jersey, five, six, seven years old in a, in a Baptist church, I walked to church every Sunday, and, and uh, we sang that song every week. But anyway, I was out cutting grass this afternoon, trying to get work in between the showers, and I didn't even know this guy had pulled in my drive. I was done cutting grass, and the lawnmower was in the back. I was getting ready to put it away, and I walked around to the front of the house. And you people probably know Lynn Care products. My wife, when she sleeps at night, next to the bed, she's got one of those breathing things, and you hook it up, and the tube comes up, and whatever it does. And uh, we subscribe to that, and they have a guy comes around that uh, comes around every month or so and gives you new products and stuff and checks it out. I'd never seen him before. I walked out, and there he was with his truck there bringing out these tubes and stuff. And He got all done. A 37-year-old uh, man, local guy, lives over in Hyder's Gap, got talking to him and asked him if he had gone to a church, and he had been. He, he mentioned churches that he went to. And the churches, some of the churches I am familiar with, they are Holy Ghost. This one guy, he really, uh, I mean, he lights it up when he preaches. 
And you can't go to that church without coming out of there knowing that you have to be born again. So he had gone there a while, him and his wife. And his wife is a school teacher up here in Glade Middle School. And he's got a 17, 18 year old daughter that just graduated high school. But I got talking to him. He said, no, we'd been in church a while, my wife and I. And he said, you know. And, uh, and here's another thing. You know, when you hear people go to churches like that, you assume that they're saved. And I've learned don't assume anything. And I got talking after he mentioned the churches. And I got talking to him. I said, well, have you been saved? And he said, no. But I know the churches he went to, I know that the seeds had been planted. So I'm just out trying to water the seeds, you know, get them sprouted. So I got talking to him. And I had gospel tracks right there on my front porch. If somebody walks down my road, I run out and flag him in and give him a gospel track and try to reach him. And uh, he sat there on my front steps, and uh, we went through the scriptures that he's heard before. And we got down to whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, and that's exactly what he did. We went through the scriptures twice, and he read them to me, and I was reading it, and uh, we went through the scriptures, and he did call upon the name of the Lord and, and asked him to save him. Now he said he's going back to church. I said, are you going to go home and tell your wife you got saved? He said, absolutely. He was really happy. You could see this guy was genuine. He says, I'm going to go tell her tonight. So he, I, I, I suggested to him, I, I shared with him, 1 Corinthians 6.19 I said that moment when you surrendered to Christ and asked him, invited him into your heart, into your life, and meant it, that's exactly what God did. And you are now indwelled with the Holy Spirit. And I gave him the scripture and so forth. So wherever you go, he goes. So uh, he said they were going to go to church, and I, I suggested to him, uh, you know what, I believe in, in what Brother Dean, we were talking about. If you're out there online and you get saved, try to find a local a church that's close to you. And, and the brother uh, Dean, was, we were just talking about that. You don't have to go 40 miles. Just find a local Bible-believing church. And I suggested him, you may want to consider getting baptized. I mentioned we have a baptistry here. Uh, he lives over in the mountains at Hyder Gap. And some people, some of the country people, like to be baptized in the creek. I said, that's your choice, but if you want to get baptized, he's got my phone number. But he said, hey, try to find a local church, and that's where they're going to go. And he's going to tell his wife, I give, her, give him some scriptures to take home. And I told him, give me a call. And I said, if you decide to get baptized, I'd love to come over and see you get baptized. So uh, God answered my prayer. I, I, I asked God every day, Lord, put somebody in my path. I don't do the choosing. And I walked around. And there he is, a local guy. So I just want to say, I'm just a messenger boy. But I want to say, Amen. praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, Amen. Amen brother. I like testimonies like that. Man, I tell you what, if Jesus comes back in the middle of a testimony like that, I think it'll be worth it. That would be a good thing. But praise the Lord for that. Everywhere you go, keep a leaky seed basket. I've told it before. Everywhere you go, just keep that leaky seed basket. Tell uh, everybody. Uh, put out those tracks and grab some of their new ones and put, pass those out also. Let's um, all let's continue to pray for our services this coming Sunday, fifth Sunday of July so of the month already. So we will do the Lord's Supper again Sunday evening. Um, and uh, uh, let's be inviting people to come to the Lord's house this, this week. I want to go over just a few announcements, I mean a few uh, prayer requests here. Let's pray for um, uh, Miss Janie. Uh, Jan Metter had her surgery yesterday. She's in a lot of pain today. Had her soul, show surgery up here. Um, her sh show, I, I, shoulder surgery. Shoulder. I'm, <laughs> soul surgery. She's had that years ago. Now you got shoulder surgery. All right, you can't say that fast three times, but uh, she's just in a lot of discomfort. Her son is watching out for her, but uh, I told her, please let us know if there's anything that we can do. Uh, let's continue to pray for her, continue to pray for Miss Janie. She recovers. Uh, let's pray for uh, Reba and Robert Neely. <coughs> Larry Russell 
um, has surgery tomorrow. He's got a blood clot in his heart. Is that right? Our artery clogged. All right, let's pray for this one here. Um, and let's continue to pray for souls. Let's pray for Paul Evans also. Um, has black lung. Um, and that's something you don't hear about a whole lot anymore simply because of the... Um, but, he's, but he is older back in the... Sure, and a lot of those older fellas like that, so... Let's pray for him. Let's pray for Miss Penny uh, Heath there also. Um, I guess she's having some difficulty there also. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll go to the, um, we'll have another song, then go to the Lord in prayer before we get back to Genesis chapter 49 this evening. <clears throat> And I will say this, you know, uh, we're always getting reports from Brother Arthur and others about people getting one to Christ. And let me say this, some of our members are obviously here, some listening in, you know, we say, well, why isn't the church full? Well, I'll just tell you, I'll speak for the preacher. We're winning people for the kingdom. They might come to our local New Testament church, or they might have a church, or, or a church more geographically located, or what have you. But listen, our, our goal here is get them into the kingdom. Get them into the kingdom of God. And uh, anyway, uh, the, the people, I don't think anybody would ask that. And, and in this day and time, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know of a lot of churches busting at the seams now, and it's exactly what the Bible said. In the end times, there will come a great falling away, a great falling away. So unfortunately, a... Uh, well, I told the preacher the other day what I was t talked to him about the other day, what I was preaching, teaching on Sunday night. And, you know, I guess I got to follow my own rule and say, we got to go forward. We got to go forward. We got to go forward because soon we're going up. Turn to page 39. How beautiful heaven must be. Speaking of going up and getting saved and being in heaven. It's a great old hymn of the past. Let's stand to our feet. Page number 39.
And now, Heavenly Father, as we come before you this evening, we bring all of these prayer requests to you. And Holy Spirit, we know that uh, we have to take them out of our hands, put them into thy hands. We think about that young, uh, uh, that uh, ruler this week as we reading about in Matthew when the Bible says his name was Jairus and he had a daughter that was sick. For all his life he provided for her, but he had to take his hands off of it and turn it over to Jesus so Jesus could heal her. But Lord, I pray you'd help us to realize all these that are on our list tonight, we can't do anything except bring them to thee. And Lord, we do ask your attention on these. And I pray, Lord, most of all, that you'd please help those to recover that need recovering, those that need strength, please give them strength. Others, Lord, that need guidance. Some need salvation. Some, Lord, just need to turn to you. And maybe they've already been saved. Father, we just give them into thy hands and may expect, Lord, the Holy Spirit to work. We know he will. I pray, God, that they'll pay attention. Bless this time that we have here this evening. And thy word, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can be seated. <coughs> Genesis chapter number 49. I did notice one thing or two, and I don't know. I'm trying to associate here. I'm doing a few odds and ends that, uh, you know, have been hanging around the house and taking care of a couple things here and there. One of the odds and ends that I've noticed is that I, I seem to give out after about 30 minutes. And I don't know if it's the heat and the humidity or anything like that, or maybe it's some of the uh senselessness uh sickness and stuff of that covid or whatever it is so um uh i trust it's the first one <laughs> but then i talked to my brother this week and i said the same thing he said listen when he got to covid the first time he got back to preaching he had he quit after 15 minutes he had no energy left and then to work back up to it so don't get your hopes up tonight but uh <laughs> i do want to uh, I just enjoy the Bible and studying, and I tell you, Genesis chapter <coughs> 49, I do want to say this too, and I know Miss Terry will, um, I know she just does it because she loves the Lord, but I tell you what, when you watch online from the house, and the crispness, the crispness of the sound and the picture itself, I'm telling you, it's almost like you're right there, it's not like being there. But it's almost like you are right there. Because I listen to a lot of preachers on video, YouTubes and their own video and stuff like that. And I, I admire them for putting their things on. But I tell you what, we got some of the best quality, top quality uh, stuff. And I, uh, I was just really pleased um, with that. Um, uh, anyway, but I, I was just, it was just a exciting because i put it on the big screen thing and <laughs> figured out how to do that put it on my thing and and just sit there and do the service there but uh i mean you could see all the little hairs that was out of place on gary's head and you could see all the every time somebody would just scratch or cough or something like that and I, no. <laughs> but i mean the the detail of it i tell you what i'm just so glad that um miss terry and them did some uh extra sacrifice and to research the better quality equipment and stuff they did so special thanks there right there handshake for hand clap from a few of us here but um uh anyway we keep our quarantined up there uh <laughs> Look at chapter 49 of Genesis. We've been in character studies. We've been going through the children of Israel. We've picked up a few of those and learned some great lessons from them. Uh, and I want to gather a few of them together and go through them tonight. But then you get it just studying uh, through what the Bible says about one. And there's so many things in there. So we'll do t touch on Dan tonight. A fellow by the name of Dan. Uh, I've been called Dan many a time, uh, mostly only by Yankees. Uh, when I went up north, I'd say, what's your name? I'd say, Dean. Not Dan. I said, Dean. Dan. I said, you need to go south and get rid of that speech impediment. That's what you need to read. Uh, but look at verse 16. Go ahead and remain seated. Gen Gen Genesis 49, 16. Dan <coughs> shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backwards. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. 
That little line there where God puts in there, I've waited for thy salvation, O Lord. He just sticks it right in the middle of the predictions and prophecies about these 12 sons of Jacob here. So uh, let's ask the Lord to teach us, and then we'll jump right into this. Heavenly Father, I do pray tonight that you'd help us to realize some great truths. Some great truths because you shed your attention upon individuals. And I pray, God, you'd help us to realize how that you can also do that to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Dan was one of the, of course, 12 tribes, but he was uh, one of the lesser known. But here is a description. Now, where the Bible oftentimes will use metaphors, notice what the Bible says. He's one of the tribes of Israel. Verse 17, he's going to be a serpent, by the way. How many of us oftentimes know when, some, when you call somebody a snake, it's not good? <laughs> uh, there's often, you know, I've oftentimes how, um, uh, how we classify people as uh, by uh, a description of an animal. We may call them a snake or we may call them a fox. Uh, we may call them something slight. We may call them a... What, a, a, a rat, you know, something along those lines. But here the Bible says, uh, he says he's going to be a serpent, by the way. Now watch this, an adder in the path that biteth the horse's heels so that his riders shall fall backwards. Now what does this necessarily mean? I believe that he's going to be, and here's the uh, abbreviated way of saying this, Dan is literally going to be the politician of the nation. Why? Right. He's going to lead, but he's also going to be vengeful. Notice verse 16, he shall judge his people, but then when the horse goes by and he's, the rider thinks he's safe on the other side, the uh, snake is going to rise up and it's going to bite the horse's heels. So he's going to judge or lead, but he's also got that tendency so don't turn your back on him. That's why I call him a politician there. Because there's something about Dan that kept him from wholeheartedly following. He held something back. He kept in reserve his pride. Now this is interesting because this fits a whole lot about Dan in the Bible. Because there's many times you'll read about Dan. Leviticus chapter number 24, verse number 11, it tells us this about Dan, that he was the first tribe to turn away from the Lord, to we would call it apostatize. He was the first tribe to leave God out and do his own thing. So that right there tells us a whole lot about Dan's character. It's okay, and I'll follow the Lord as long as it benefits me. But when I have to sacrifice or I have to go out of the way, then I'm going to choose my own way. And boy, is that not a testimony of many of the people that we've crossed paths with. You know, as long as it's convenient, they're going to serve the Lord. But if it starts raining, they're going to run to shelter and leave the Lord alone. Dan itself, uh, his name means judging. Now, I call him the politician because... He knew how to work the circumstances. Now, this is interesting in studying the Bible. Let me give you just a few odds and ends about what happened to some of the times when Dan was mentioned. The first, one of the first times when they went into the land, the promised land there, the Bible said that there were two and a half tribes, uh, Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. Uh, that, that stayed behind. Now, Dan went on in, but Dan became on the outskirts, so to speak, of the nation of Israel. One reason I know that Samson, I mean, that uh, Dan was political, so to speak, untrustworthy, unstable, because the Bible said that uh, Samson was of the tribe of Dan. Samson. Now remember Samson? Who was Samson? Samson was that fellow that was the strongest man in the Bible. 
But you ever studied his life? It was way up here. It was way down here. It was way up here. It was way down here. It says this about Samson more than any other person in the Old Testament. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Maybe because it left him so many times. Because he would be up. And he would grab a jawbone of a donkey and slay a thousand Philistines. Then it would be down and he would have his head in the lap of Delilah. Then it would be up and then he would be out there ca ca uh, capturing 40 foxes, tying their tails together. And the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he was of the tribe of Dan. So we all know how unstable he was. And he would lead <coughs> until it hurt his pride. Until it bothered him. I tell you what the greatest thing that this world could do right now, and especially Americans, and I say this because I'm an American, just forget about yourself and live by principles and live by rules instead of get, trying to get our way all the time. And I tell you what's killed us is the freedom, uh, the pride rather, that um, uh, comes because we're a free nation and we can make choices. Pride's destroyed us. we well, we used to shout in church. You can't even get people to burp anymore in church. We used to praise the Lord in church. They don't even come to the altar anymore. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Pride. Pride. And the old adage says, pride, the middle letter is I. That's what Satan did. Satan said, I will ascend upon the throne uh, or into the most high. I will set my throne up beside the Most High. I will. I, I. He had an I problem here. All right. In Leviticus chapter number 24, one of the first instances of blasphemy when the law was being given was by a child of a Danite woman. I'll read you this. Let me jump over here to Leviticus chapter number 24. We're going to go to a couple of verses, uh, passages here in just a few minutes. But Leviticus chapter number 24. Now, when you study the book of Leviticus, you'll remember that Leviticus was only written in about 30 days. God had him pin it down, pin it down, pin it down. This is how you worship. This is how you sacrifice. This is how you dress the priest. This is what the priest does. This is what the people say when they bring the sacrifice. And he wrote that book in 30 days. Not so with the book of Numbers. It took 40 years for them to go through the wilderness. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, took a long time uh, to pin that, the, the experiences there. But in, Deut in Leviticus chapter 24, verse number 10, here's what the Bible said. And the son of an Israelitish woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel, and the, this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. And they brought him unto Moses. His mother's name was Shelemeth, the daughter of Dibri of the tribe of Dan. So here's Dan. Remember I told you he's the first one to blaspheme the things of God? Here is the first blasphemy of one of the children that is taken out. And the Bible, I love this part uh, where the Bible says there, uh, <coughs> Moses went to the Lord, verse 12, they put him in ward that the mind of the Lord might be showed them. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Bring him forth that a curse without the camp. Let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head. Let all the camp congregation... Stone him. One of the first ones that was stoned here is one uh, was the tribe of Dan. So I say this, Dan was a leader, but Dan was an unstable leader. He was an untrustworthy leader. His interest had limits. Those limits were dipped in self-promotion. And man, as I read this, I listen very rarely anymore. I, I try to catch the news about once a day. But I tell you what, the, this, this thing of being a traitor in our country today is all over our leadership today. I tell you, you want to watch, people say, you better watch out for Russia. You better watch out for Russia. Let me say this, we better watch out for China. Better, I tell you why, because our leadership today is shaking hands with China. They, Reuters report last month, they released a million barrels of our reserve oil to drop, drop the gas prices. And 30% of it went to China. 
Tell me that ain't something. Tell me that the reason China doesn't like tr Donald Trump is because Donald Trump said, hey, you got to start paying your fair share. Why is it that China then sent a virus over here to corrupt a elect? I tell you what, and, uh, and by the way, I, I, I was watching the news today. China owns 200,000 acres of prime land next to military bases, Montana, Texas, South Dakota. They buying it in America. You know, if you went to China, you could not own their land. You can't buy it. But they're buying it up here. Why are they buying it up here? You say, brother, didn't try to scare me. You better be scared. If you're leaning on the government, if you're leaning on the government, I'm telling you, there's going to be, man, I know I'm getting way off track here, there's going to be a bloodbath in this country before it's all over with if Jesus Christ doesn't come first. Why? Because you let them Chinese troops march down the street and bring their tanks into the neighborhoods and things like that. Everybody that's got a gun, they're going to stand up and they're going to be a bloodbath. But freedom's gone. I'll tell you why freedom's gone. It's not because the, our uh, corrupt politicians and stuff are in bed with Chinese. Our freedom's gone because we forgot about God. We forgot about God. David said, the Lord is my high tower, and the Lord is my rock, and the Lord is my fortress. I tell you, uh, this, this is where we are today. We've got Danites leading us. Oh, they're political, and they're savvy. Not the one that's... <laughs> In the top position now, he can't even uh, 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 he can't even keep a, a, co a coherent thought. But they're political and they're savvy. But they'll sell you out in a in a in a New York minute. Why? And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. And um, here's what Moses called Dan, Deuteronomy thirty three twenty two. He's a lion's whelp that leaps from Bashan. This refers to the unpredictability of young lions. They have a whole lot of pride, or, and, you know, uh, the uh, uh, instinct of nature that's uh, born into that lion. But the Bible said they leaps from Bashan. You know what Bashan is? Bashan is a place of evil. This is why the Bible said David, when he predicted how Jesus Christ was going to be crucified, it was the bulls of Bashan that had gathered around Jesus. The most evil, the most cruel, and the most sadistic, hellish uh, uh, forces attacked our Lord when he was put on the cross there. Now, Moses said... Daniel or Dan, the tribe of Dan, is a lion's whelp from Bashan. So all this fits about Dan here. Now, let me just give you a few things here. He has charisma, but is only followable if he's not put in a corner or paid off. Even then, somebody would have to wonder what direction he was going to go next. <clears throat> How many people do we know? that do great things in building and promotion until they lose the limelight. When I look at these men that we've been studying here and go through, and I, I look at Dan, and I thought to myself, how many people have I crossed paths with in my life that were great leaders, and you could almost have a good stability and a good confidence in them, and yet... At a certain time, they turned. At a certain time, they quit. At a certain time, they just left the Lord. Now, I'm going to come back to another principle here in a minute, but let me give you a couple of illustrations. I remember years ago, I was, we were, had a soul winning group. We went to a couple trailer parks and areas and things like that. Had a soul winning group, and I had some teenagers with me and had some other adults, and they had some teenagers and stuff with them. I remember knocking on a door. And a lady come to the door and uh, talked to her for just a few minutes. And she had just gotten in to the Jehovah Witnesses. So she was kind of a new recruit in Jehovah Witnesses. She was a little excited about learning about all these Jehovah Witnesses. And uh, I talked to her for a few minutes. And 
assured her that Jesus Christ was the only Lord because I always take people uh, that's into that. Uh, I usually take them to uh, Hebrews chapter number 1, and I take them to uh, Revelation chapter number 22, and I take them to John chapter number 20, where the Bible talks about Jesus as Lord. I don't worry about the birthdays. I don't worry about the Christmas because all that is just fluff to kind of get you distracted. The ultimate issue is they do not believe Jesus Christ is Lord. That's the bottom line right there. They believe he was a prophet, a son of God or something, but uh, not was Lord. So I take him to the show. And, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't make any headway. I took everything I knew. I, I couldn't make any head. I thought, my soul, I, 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 I'm just going to have to leave. And about that time, this other lady that was in our group, uh, she knocked on the door and didn't know I was in there talking to this lady. And I had another teenager with me, didn't know I was in there talking to this lady. She, uh, we were at the table, and she went up, got to the door, and this other soul winner in our group came in. I could give you her name. But um, <clears throat> five minutes, five minutes, that New Jehovah Witnesses witness was on her knees beside that coffee table by just the words that were given by this other. Now here's the here's the here's the sad part. Here's the sad part. She was on her knees. We this lady started praying with her, got halfway through the prayer, and this girl that just joined the Jehovah Witnesses got up started screaming and running back to the back room and slammed the door. I don't want it. I don't want it. It's the most eerie thing, one of the most eerie things I'd ever seen. But my point, now she didn't get saved and probably never would. But here's my point. That lady that came, and I was already in there talking to her, and I'd spent 30, 40 minutes in there, and she came in, talked to her in just five minutes, had her on her knees. And said the right, and I thought, my, so, and this lady that was in our church at the time and stuff like that. She had one bunch, I don't know how many, but I'm, I want, I dare to even say hundreds of people to Christ. Had a bus route and had kids and taught Sunday school class. You know, she's not even in church today. I saw her about a year ago. She's all about, you know, the housing stuff she's got, all about her grandkids and things. She got out of church years and years ago. And I thought to myself, how can somebody just be so talented, so used by God, and so far from God just a little while later? I used to have a friend, and we drove up to Brother Howe's funeral uh, last time we had any kind of trip together. His name was Eddie Williams, and Eddie was a, he, he was a good guy. He was faithful to the Lord for a long time, and uh, he'd come out a pretty rough lifestyle. But he, got, he was led to the Lord by a lady that, boy, she just knocked on his door one day, talked to him for a few minutes, led him to Christ. He came to church. He got hundreds of people saved himself and got in the Lord's house. And he served the Lord for many, many years and was still in church when uh, we left and came back up here. But my point was this, the lady that led him to the Lord got out of church just shortly after that. And it almost destroyed his foundation. He said, I can't understand it. She told me she loved the Lord. She told me she uh, 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 wanted me to be saved. And I bowed my head. And I got saved. And all of a sudden, she turned around and left the ministry. Or left working for the Lord. Left the church and things. And, I didn't, you know, we don't know all the story or anything. But here's my point. My point is this. There are a whole lot of Dans out there. That while they are submitted and committed to the Lord, God will use them. But when something comes along and they get away from the Lord and leave the Lord, it doesn't nullify the things that God blessed them in. It hurts our confidence in their faithfulness. But boy, I tell you what, there's a greater mercy and grace than ours when it comes to looking and helping and exhorting other people and putting our confidence in other people. Other people are going to let us down. There are Dan's all over the place, especially even in this plastic image generation that we live. I'll tell you why the social media pages like Facebook are dangerous. You know why? They present an image. 
They present an image. One reason why people are not getting close to God today is that no one can come to God with an image. God exposes what we are. We don't like that. But while we're using, or while we're committing our, and serving God, God will use us to show His power upon us <coughs> to get us to a point where we go back to Him. Then He shows us what we are so He can work on us that much more. But most people don't like that. They want to, they, they're like Dan. Oh, I don't no, no, I like to be used. I like to win those people to Christ. I like to get, I like to know how to win people to Christ. But they don't want to be whittled away at by the Holy Spirit for God to use them for greater things down the road. And those are the ones often like Dan that go away first. They apostatize. Why? It's all about this. It's all about me. It's all about me. I like what Brother Phillips says at times. It's not about me. It's not about me. And to be honest with you, I know I'm pastor and I know I'm uh, up front. I know I love, to, I, I love to teach and to preach and stuff like that. But listen, I say this. Look beyond me. Look beyond me. It's not about me. My life's going to be done one day if the Lord tarries his coming. If God wants another preacher in here and God moves me out someday, then I want to follow the Lord. Uh, but it's not about me. It's not about me. And many people, listen, I believe God uses the, um, uh, I don't know what, what we would call it, the heroes in our life to get us to a point. But don't put your confidence in those heroes. We're all but flesh. Put our confidence in the Lord. Now, Dan, <coughs> he, was, he was the guy that was polished and everything. He said, all right, now, here's what we're going to do. We're going into Canaan land over here. You take the right, I take the left. And we're going this way, we're going that way, we're going this way, and we're going that way. And when the battle got hard, you couldn't find him. You couldn't find him. How many times have we seen people like that? Boy, it's good to see you at church. It's good to have you here. Praise God. God, it's good to have you here. Six months later, the FBI can't find them. Hello? <laughs> Those are Danites. And boy, and God deliver us from being a Danite. Now, one of the strangest stories in the Bible is in, I want you to watch this. Uh, go to Judges 18. Judges 18. I promise I won't go uh, a long time. I'll get done when I when uh, <coughs> I'm done. Anyway, uh, J Judges 18. Now, this is the strangest story in the Bible right here. Um, <coughs> this tells about the apostasy of Israel in the land of Canaan. Now I want you to look. I'm going to jump down here to verse number. Uh, twenty nine. Uh, Judges 18, look at verse 29. Now watch this. They called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born into Israel, howbeit the name of the city was Laish at the first. And the children of Dan set up the graven image. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests of the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. And they set them up Micah's Graven image. See, they, this is the first time that a tribe apostatized. Now, here's an interesting thing. It was this city of Dan that is, uh, th that is our focus. Watch this. It's mentioned many times in the Bible. If you look up the word Dan in a um, concordance, it will show some 67 times Dan is mentioned. The majority of those times, it's talking about the city of Dan. Now, what is the, the uh, extreme about the city of Dan? It was on the most extreme border of Israel. That's why many times in the Bible, you'll read this statement from Dan to Beersheba. I'll read you some of them. We, we say it like this. You know, all over this land, from Maine... To California. We say it like that. 
But in Israel, it was always, watch this, Judges 21, 20 verse 1. Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man, watch this, from Dan even to Beersheba. 1 Samuel 3, 20, all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba. 2 Samuel 3, 10, to translate the kingdom of the house of Saul to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Dan even to Beersheba. What is he saying? From that farthest point to that farthest point, that city of Dan lived on the outskirts. 2 Samuel 17, 11. The Bible said this, Therefore I counsel all, is, all Israel be generally gathered to thee from Dan even to Beersheba. That's found out throughout the Bible. What's he saying? All over the land. All over the land. Now what's the interesting thing about it? When Dan is started, when the city is started, the one is named after this man, it's on the farthest, utmost, uttermost edge of the land. When the nation split, Jeroboam and his brother Rehoboam, Rehoboam took two tribes, Jeroboam took ten tribes. The ten tribes apostatized. Dan, Jeroboam did not want them to go back to Jerusalem to worship, so he set up two altars, one in Bethel, meaning the house of God, and the other in the city of Dan. Where was it? Right on the edge. When you come into the border of his country, he wants you to know they weren't for God. They weren't for God. They were for idols. Now let me add this one more thing here. In spite of the many faults and failures of Dan here, God still honors the times that we do sacrifice for him. Even though Dan was the first to mingle with the world, God later on used him in a great and mighty way. Um, and uh, <coughs> uh, t -t 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 uh, I was trying to look for the, I didn't write the passage down, but in 2 Chronicles chapter number 2, the Bible said this, that God used Dan to form the furniture and the artic articles of uh, tabernacle worship in Solomon's temple. He used Dan to do that. Now, I'm simply saying, God is not interested in, or, or let me put it this way. Before, God, before anyone thinks that God is not interested in every person, we've got to remember this, that God has civil and national laws, but God also is near to them that are of a contrite heart and obedient to His Word as individuals. I'm saying the tribe of Dan was that first one that went away from God. But within that nation, those that surrendered to God, God would use them. Listen, we know of God's authority by creation. The plan of, his, of the closing of this age of grace that we live in and how God's bringing everything together is based on God's plan that He set up. But watch this. Don't let that blind us to the fact that God is most concerned with individuals. Watch this. I, let me show you this one thing in here, and then I'll, I'm going to skip several things here. I want you to go to Revelation chapter number 3. Revelation chapter number 3. The Bible says this, that to this, God said this, To this man will I look, the man that is contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. That's in Isaiah chapter 66. But I want you to go to Revelation chapter number 3. And I want to show you something that I have been studying here in these churches. But here's something I've not seen before, but this is interesting to me. We know the condition of the, last, of the church in Laodicea. What is it? Lukewarm. It's lukewarm, not hot, nor cold. It's lukewarm. It's in the middle there. Uh, <coughs> but watch this. Um, verse 19 of Revelation 3. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And who's he talking to? He's talking to the church. But watch this. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man Hear my voice and open the door. I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Wait a minute. God's talking to the church. But he's not dealing. He's, but when it comes to this point of getting back in touch with someone, it's not to the church. It's any man. It's, let me put it this way. 
the church within the church. It's the church within the church. And it's not going to be a click here and a click there. It's those in a lukewarm church where the majority of the people uh, don't are not on fire, are apathetic in that age, don't necessarily care for anything except for what they have in their bank account because they said, verse number 17, they said, I'm rich. I'm increased with goods. He's not talking about that whole group right there. He said, that thing's falling asleep. Those people are dying and half dead right there, and I can't wake them up. But he said, if I can find one in that church, one in that church, it may be lukewarm, but if I can find one person in that church, if he'll hear my voice, open the door, I'll come in, I'll commune with him, we'll sup with him, and he can sup with me. You know what he's telling us? We may be in a Danite tribe, but we don't have to be like that. We can still follow the Lord. There were people in Dan's tribe that still individually followed the Lord. Oh, Brother Dean, we're the greatest nation on the earth. We got a proud bumper sticker about America. It's got a flag on the back of our car. Boy, we, we, we vote this way, and we've got these great... So uh, we hang out the flags and we do everything. We're great in this nation right here. But wait a minute now. America has went away from God. America's went away from God. But who within America will open the door and let Jesus Christ give them assurance and will give them guidance and will give them uh, peace and will give them that hope right there? Church may be dead, but it only takes one spark in that church to get things fired back up again. Why do I hear like, why do I hear like testimonies? Why do I, I like, <coughs> like things like that? Why? Because I want to see how God's working in the individual's lives. I want to see God start a fire, and it may be through some, you're, you're, your preaching is kind of dry. Well, then let God start it somewhere else. God will move me on. That's fine. God will either fire me up, but hey, what I'm saying is this. If any man, if any man will open the door, Jesus is, and yet what we do is oftentimes we just kind of go with the flow. We just, well, it's my DNA. I'm a Danite, so, you know, I know what to say, and I know how to get the votes, and I know how to do all this other stuff right here. I'm a Danite. And God says, wait a minute now, I want to deal individually. I need somebody of a contrite heart and trembleth at my word. Heavenly Father, I pray you take these thoughts this evening, how much more we could say about this. But, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to realize in this time that we live, in this day that we live. It's all because. It's all going to be because of. Our relationship with thee. And Lord how. This nation's going to crumble. And we can't hang on. To what you've blessed this nation with. In the, from the past. Because we've turned away. But Lord we can hang on to you. I pray you put into every one of our hearts. That are here tonight. And those that are listening by way of our own line, I pray, God, that you please just help us go somewhere, bow our unworthy heads, and give you all the honor and the glory and say, God, please, burn in my heart, burn in my life that fire of heaven. God, we can do that individually. I pray you help us to do it. Thank you for your word. Keep us safe in Jesus' name. Amen. I appreciate you coming this evening. Don't forget to invite someone to the Lord's house this uh, coming Sunday. And, uh, hey, be kind to everybody. Everybody is having a tough time. Good evening. God bless.